Why do water heaters have single elements versus dual elements? And what if you want multiple elements to work at the same time versus just one at a time? Like, how does all that work? And did you know that there's 480 volt water heaters? I got a really good question asked to me. Uh, somebody sent this with a picture of two three-phase circuits going to a water heater, and they're all 480. You can tell that the voltage class is 480 because it's brown, orange, yellow. Typically, brown, orange, yellow means that it's gonna be 480 volt, and then you've got three-phase. The interesting thing about this picture is that there's two sets of three-phase circuits. So that's not something that you're often gonna see. And what that means is that it's a very specific kind of setup. It means that they're going, both of the sets of elements are gonna be used simultaneously rather than having a thermostat that's gonna switch one between the other. So before we get like too crazy with the nonsense, let me explain water heaters a little bit. On an electrician level, I'm not a plumber over here, but like on an electrician level, um, if you have a single element that we would run, say like a black and a red to, boom, boom. 240 volts, right? Just normal, that's how we would wire a, a, a normal water heater. If it's like a, a 4KW or a 4,000 watt water heater, it means that this little element is gonna put out 4,000 watts of heat and it's gonna heat all of this water in this tank. Now the problem with doing that with a tank water heater is tanks can be huge. So if you get a much larger tank, a lot of times the stuff at the, the top and the stuff at the bottom can be heated differently so that it's more efficient. Because if you just have one element trying to heat a massive tank, it's gonna take forever to heat your water. So a lot of times they'll do a dual element system. So they'll have an element up on the top and an element on the bottom. These don't run simultaneously, they're, they're uh, individually run. So usually we will still just run a uh, 120 volts, you know, like we'll have the black come in uh, from like a terminal block up here that we'll, we'll bring a black in. There's gonna be some kind of thermostat thing that's gonna switch which element it goes to, but we're still just bringing in a black and a red. And then we have uh, a red that goes down to this one, red that goes down to this one, and a black that goes down to this one. So the thermostat up here is switching the, uh, back and forth between which set of elements is heating up. And the reason that they do that, heat rises, right? So at first, uh, all of the, the pipes that come out of the top of a water heater are where the water's coming from when it goes through your plumbing system. So they wanna heat all of this top stuff up first to get it hot first. So if you're turning a faucet or something on, you got hot water pulling out of it. Once it heats up to a certain amount, that thermostat can tell this one has a thermostat and this one has a thermostat. This one can tell that to shut off, switch over which wires it's going to, and then go down to the other element and start heating that one up. And so these two thermostats are keeping the water constantly hot in there, but it doesn't have to do the whole tank with just one element. So that's the reason that you have dual element water heaters. Now the third thing is a simultaneous water heater. So you've got a tank, you've got two elements, but in some situations, maybe in commercial environments or things like that, where they just wanna have a whole lot of heat, heating this thing up at the same time, they don't wanna have to worry about having to go back and forth and all of this, uh, a lot more expensive setups usually, um, they'll have simultaneous, which means that you are going to run two different circuits. You're gonna run a black over here, you're gonna run a black over here. These are coming straight off breakers, right over here, right over here. No thermostat to switch them. You got a breaker on this one and a breaker on this one. So they are both pumping simultaneously. You'll still have thermostats like turning them on and turning them off and all of that kind of stuff, but it's just a different way to do it. So if you look at the picture that was sent in, we have two sets of circuits coming in from a panel. You don't see a whole bunch of other little components inside and thermostat wiring and everything in that picture. It shows there's a conduit and there's three sets of 480 going to one and three sets going to the other. So another thing I wanted to talk like kind of briefly about is just how an element works, what an element is. So like inside of uh, an element, there's a, a whole bunch of different ways that elements can operate, but essentially, you can either have a huge piece of copper that's like really thick and fat, and when you run electrical current through it, it starts to heat up. That's one way a, a, an element can be. Another way is it could actually be like a coil of wire, just like, you know, a light filament would be. And running current through it is gonna heat it up. There's a bunch of different shapes too. You might have like something that's like shaped like this, like really, really, really fat, and uh, it's got, you know, two, terminals and if you're going if there's like water pumping through something and they want to heat water up as it's passing by that thing in like a huge uh 
a pressurized system, they may use something like this, or there might be some like weird coily thing that goes like this. And then it's got like a middle section, you know, and the, like there's a ton of different ways that elements can be, but like a toaster, but essentially you're just taking cramming current through something with a certain amount of resistance and based off that resistance and the amount of uh, pressure that you're applying with voltage, it's going to run current through there and it's going to make it glow and start getting really, really hot and it'll heat up anything that's around it. So essentially what we have in a water heater is we've got the utility pole out here. This is your primary side that's not touching your secondary side. From your secondary side, you got a coil of wire. You got a black and red that goes through a panel, through breakers, and goes to a water heater. And it's just another coil of wire, an element. So you have a complete circuit in between, and that's how a water heater works. Now, the things that decide, you know, it's switching on, switching off, you're gonna have a thermostat in there that's gonna like cut it out at a certain point because it's got low voltage wiring in here that's gonna talk to it and communicate with it. It's gonna cut power to the main circuit but it's really as difficult as an appliance like this is. Anything with heating, a furnace is the same thing. We could have just drawn a big furnace shape. You know, there's a big heating element on the inside. We could have drawn a, a toaster. You put your yummy little toasts in there and there's probably two elements in there because one for each side, right? But that's as hard as a heating thing is. It's got some kind of element, gets really hot. Next, the idea of the, the dual element versus the coming out of a breaker. One way that I like to think of it is when I notice a piece of equipment, whether furnace or, or anything, if I see like a terminal block, you know, like uh, there's a bunch of screws, screw there, screw there, screw there, screw there, and you're seeing multiple sets of wires come in and landing on terminal blocks, that tells me like, oh, this is controlled. Something has to turn or like something, some other piece of equipment somewhere within this thing has to tell it to switch which sets of leads that it's going on. So when you've got your incoming power, it's completely isolated from any of this stuff. We land our wires up here. The you know, like AC guys, if it's a furnace or, or whatever, they're going to run all the low voltage stuff that has nothing to do with us. So in that situation, you'll probably have a terminal block here where you land your wires, or you might have pigtailed wires out that you have to wire not onto them. Everything else is controlled by whoever's installing the thing. And it's usually not us. With something that's more uh, like what this person had sent in, they're running wires directly to the elements. That's a different thing. So if you're having to run wires to two different sets of elements, you're gonna see two elements in there and they're running straight off a breaker. So you're gonna run your wires in and land them on two sets of elements. Oh, another thing too is dual voltage. So there's a lot of elements. This is another type of an element. I, it's kind of like a messed up drawing, but essentially you have like this long probe looking thing and you'll have three loops all on it on one piece one thing that they can screw in and shove into a tank of water and it'll heat it up. This is for three phase specifically. So everything we talked about before was all single phase. So when we get into three phase, elements get a little bit weirder. They'll still have sets of elements. So in a single element unit, um, you could still just have a single array or like three different elements that are, are on one circuit. So each phase is feeding one side of this um, this grouping of elements. So in a situation like this, so say we've got, you know, we've got three loops, right? We've got like the blue loop, we've got the red loop and we've got the, the black loop. Well, they can be put together in certain ways. These white, there's actually um, these little plates a lot of times that will connect these that you can put a, a screw on and you can connect two different ones because if you want to um, operate this because you're in a 480 environment and you're sending 480 volts to it, you're gonna have, wanna have it wired in a certain way versus if you're in a 240 volt environment because a lot of the equipment like this is dual rated. It's dual voltage rated. So it'll say 240 slash 480 or 240 slash 460, kind of depending on what the equipment is that you're hooking up. Um, but in a situation like this, you can have it wired in a way so that current is only going through one set of elements, or you can change the wiring on it. So now it's going through two sets of elements. So that adds twice as much resistance. So what happens is if you double the voltage that you push through something, you can double the amount of resistance that it has to go through and it'll act the exact same way. So you'll get the same wattage uh, that's same amount of heat essentially being produced at 480 because you're pushing through twice as much resistance, but you're doubling your pressure. 
If you had a 240 volt system, you would just change the wiring so it only has to go through one set of elements. You're having your resistance, so you'd only have to put half as much pressure behind it to get the same result, the same amount of heating. So uh, I just kind of denoted that three different ways. Um, but essentially in, in uh, let's look at this one first. Say on our brown phase, we've got 480. Well, don't even pay attention to the colors because I'm just saying this is 240. But we've got a hot coming in. You notice that it's hooked up to one of these elements, but it's gonna look for its next complete circuit. So uh, it doesn't really, you don't follow this through like every single line. You have to look what's, what does it have in common? So this, this uh, orange is attached to a black right here. It's gonna take whatever it's attached to, it's white, and it's gonna go through the next element and back on this circuit. So right here, I know that's kind of confusing. I don't know how to explain that in like a cleaner way. Uh, let's see, we've got bright green, dark green. Let's go green. So power's gonna come in here and to find its completed circuit, it's either gonna go through here and back out, meaning it's going through one element. It's not going like through two of them or it's gonna go through here now you have two circles. So either way it goes, depending on which two phases the pushing and the pulling is happening at what time, and it's happening on all three because we're in a three phase environment. So it's either really pushing, kind of pushing or pulling. You know, it's, it's always changing because three phases in a circle, 120 degrees out of phase, as things spin, the relationships to which two are pulling and pushing in comparison to the other ones are constantly changing. But between any two circuits, you're gonna have a certain loop, but either way it goes, you can see that this brown relationship that it has to red, we'll look at uh, uh, what is brown and yellow look like here by going through the red. Well, brown and yellow have one element. So we've got 240 between there and there. Now between yellow and orange, we've got our yellow, we've got our orange, that's the blue filament. So yeah, we have one filament that it's going through. And we've got brown going through black. Uh, so our orange and our brown should be, yeah, this last element. So anyways, it's just to say that you have one element between two different phases, right? So the next way to look at it, a little bit different, I've changed these. So instead of it being pairs that are wired together, in this way, it looks like a Y system because we're just combining one side of each one of the elements. So the way the current's gonna flow is it's gonna go through here and then it's gonna keep going through another element to get back on between these two specific phases. If we took a different phase, say we go boom and we just take between orange. Between these two phases, it's still gonna go through two elements. So that means that the amount of pressure that we apply if we didn't change the voltage and we're still only running 240, we just added twice as much resistance to 240, meaning it's not gonna produce the same amount of heat. So we have to change the wiring to make sure that we're doubling up on the heat. Another way to look at this whole representation, we said it's gonna always go through two elements, right? Uh, our orange is hooked to our black, it goes through black, and then we said that it was gonna go through either red or uh, blue, doesn't, matter, doesn't really matter. So in this case, let's look through red. So we said we're gonna go through black and red to complete our circuit. Brown goes through black, goes through red, completes our circuit. You see what's going on, right? There's two elements there. So if we change, same thing, let's go from black. Instead, we're gonna skip red, we'll go to blue. We still have two elements, but now we're brown and orange, brown and orange. Same thing, we're going through two elements to get there. So we're going through twice as much resistance. This is the same thing with motors. If you've got a motor, You've got like the, the, the door that you can open up and all your wires are hanging out. Well, with a dual rated motor, you're gonna have two different voltages. It'll be like 220, uh, well, maybe like 230 and 460. Same kind of thing, you'll have two sets of leads and they're either wiring things in a delta where you've got you know one element and your hots are coming in and they're only sharing one element or you're gonna have a Y setup where just like this, your incoming wires have a relationship and they have to be able to get from one to the other. So you're always going between two elements. Um, and that's how you change the, the leads on a motor as well. And 
I've made videos on this. You can actually change on a motor, on a three phase motor, if there's three hots, if you change any two hots, it makes the motor go in reverse. So a lot of times you have to check rotation when you're in like commercial and industrial environments because you'll do something and then instead of the conveyor belt going one way, it's like starts going back the other way or instead of lifting, something starts to, to go back the other way. So you always have to be careful with your rotation, but you can always change two of the leads, doesn't matter which two, um, to get the rotation to change. Anyways, not here or there. So now is your quiz time. What do you think in the picture that was sent to us, just by the information we've covered, do you think that the two things in the picture that he sent are simultaneous or they're two different elements? One's gonna heat the top, the thermostat's gonna tell it to heat the bottom, heat the top, keep changing back and forth. If you guessed that it was simultaneous, you're correct. All of his wires are coming out of a conduit that's probably going to a panel somewhere. And that's how all of this stuff is getting wired. So he's got two completely different sets of elements that are running off of a breaker. There's probably still a thermostat controlling this to turn it off, turn it on. Um, but you have two separately powered banks of three phase elements that are going on. So it's going to be a simultaneous, meaning everything's gonna get heated bottom and top of that tank at the same time. So hope that helped. That was a really good question. It was a really like unique thing for uh, Zach, my moderator and my like everything guy, for those of you that don't know Zach, join Discord. Seriously, you need to join Discord um, or Facebook or whatever. Zach's the guy that like runs all of my communities and he's, um, it's like my, he's like my glue, man. <laughs> Anyways, Zach sent that to me because somebody was talking to him. So thank you, Zach. And thank you, somebody, whoever the somebody was that was talking to him. I should probably say this person's name. Louis? Luis. That's, that's gotta be a Luis. Luis or Lewis, thank you so much for your question. Love you crazy people. See you in the next one.